going on guys? We are back here at my parents house. It is Christmas holidays. I'm having some fun here in the kitchen and today I'm going to do something I have not done yet. Uh, my brother got the uh, chance to go out hunting, picked up uh, some venison, or should I say took down some venison, uh, and then now I get to play with it. So we got ourselves one pound of ground venison, about a half a cup of red bell peppers, me, uh, small dice, I got a small dice white onion there. Because our venison is much leaner meat than, uh, than other meats that we work with, everybody loves bacon, everybody loves bacon fat, so we are going to add in about a half a pound of bacon. We've got our eggs, garlic, breadcrumbs, got some seasonings, a little bit of uh, moutard, maple syrup, red wine vinegar and the most important out of everything we got salt and pepper so we are going to uh, get into it don't mind any of these other sounds that are uh, going on along the way it's just my brother and sister going a little crazy fighting each other so like always we're gonna start by washing our hands all right so now we're going to take our venison. Whenever I'm working with any kind of ground meat, beef, whatever, pork, whatever it is, really like to bring it up to room temperature first. A, it's a little easier on the hands, not as cold. B, you're just working with a little uh, softer meat, a little easier to work with. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and throw in the venison, our bacon. I'm gonna throw in our garlic, that was about two tablespoons. Like always, I hate measuring. Go by the eye, go by the taste, go by the heart, whatever it is. We're gonna sprinkle in some chili powder. About a tablespoon. And for a little bit of heat, ch uh, red chili flakes. Gonna add in our onions. Red bell peppers. Then we are going to add in two eggs. Uh, no shells, you wanna crack the eggs, I should mention that. I know it's sad nowadays that we need to say those things, but we do. So, we got everything in there. I'm going to add about two tablespoons, and again, by the eye. Looks right. Black pepper. Number one way to tell if you've got enough black pepper in there. You gotta get a grinder at first. But go until you're too tired. Right when you think, oh I think that's enough, keep going. And we're going to add about two tablespoons of salt. Again, by eye. Nothing too crazy. About one to two ta or one to one and a half tablespoons of red wine vinegar. And same goes for maple syrup. Alright, once you got everything in there, time to get down and dirty. Now the one thing with meatloaf, uh, a lot of people will mix it up with like hamburger or um, mainly hamburger. But the big thing with meatloaf is unlike hamburger where you're actually not trying to work it too much and you're not trying to break down that meat. Um, meatloaf you're really trying to actually work it all together and get a nice firm consistency more like a loaf of bread. Because when you cut into a burger you'll notice that it's loosely packed, and as soon as you kind of bite into it, you're gonna notice it start to fall apart. And you'll actually notice pieces that, um, yeah, will just fall off. And it's, it's pretty straightforward, but yeah, when you're going meatloaf, you wanna be able to slice it and, uh, and keep it in a slice. 
if I was to say a time, I'd probably say you're looking at about twice as long mixing as you would for burgers. Just to really get that in there, get that nice consistency and the same texture all the way through. So once you have everything mixed up, it should look like this. For the next thing, to help it have that firm shape, we want about one cup of breadcrumbs. And you'll notice as soon as you kind of jump in there and start mixing again, it'll feel a little drier. Don't be too scared. Um, there is lots of fat that's in the meat that is still solid. So once you mix this all together and get it in a nice shape, yeah, once you get it in a nice shape and you get it in a smoker, everything will render down and become nice and moist. Anyway, that is nicely mixed. I am going to quickly grab a cutting board and we are going to take this guy plop it on here and we're actually going to work on shaping it into a nice loaf. Yeah, our goal is nice. It's a nice, nice loaf that when you go like this, still stays together, right? If you pick it up and it starts to fall apart and you can't keep it in one piece, then you either need to add a few more breadcrumbs, some more eggs. Uh, so if you're noticing that it's too wet and it's falling apart, then you want to add more eggs. If you're noticing that it is too dry and falling apart, then you want to, sorry, if you're noticing it's too wet, you want to add the breadcrumbs. Notice it's too dry, you want to add the egg. Uh, it's all a judgment call, especially when we're eyeballing. So that and every meat has a different fat content. So like I said in the brisket video, us humans, we all have different fat content. Every animal has different fat content. So we got to pay attention to that and actually inspect the meats that we're cooking right before we actually cook them. Ground meat, it's a bit different because we can add fats in. We can, uh, we can change that, uh, that meat to fat ratio. So now that we've got this all shaped, next step, we are going to step outside, get the smoker going, get it heated up, get this guy in the smoker. Then we're going to come back, um, work on the barbecue sauce that we're going to top it with as well as the side dishes. And we're actually going to make a whole meal because this is what I'm making for the fam tonight. So we will check back in a bit or actually, no, you guys are going to follow me outside. So we'll see you outside getting the smoker going and yeah, check back in a few. All right, so we are outside, out front. It is a little chilly out, so we're gonna be battling with a little bit of temperature today, but we got our Master Forge propane smoker that we are gonna be using today. Uh, inside, I got one shelf already set up. Get that off there. This is where we're gonna be putting our meatloaf a little bit up. We want to uh, higher up in this guy, we, the more control we have over the temperature. Uh, as heat rises, it's actually gonna be a little bit cooler right in this middle. Uh, but don't ask me how, don't ask me why. That's just uh, what I've known and figured out from experience. Also, you never really want to go off these temp these thermometers. I'm going to because I got a bit more uh, experience with this guy. I kind of know how it works. But normally I would be using my ink bird, monitoring temperatures inside, so I get more accurate reading than this guy. So we're going to fire this guy up. Now I always like to uh, put it on full blast uh, in order to heat it up. Uh, but then as soon as I drop any food in there, I will actually drop it right down. So we're going to let this heat up for about 10 minutes, head back inside, uh, check on our meatloaf, and then get it in the smoker. Smoker's heating up. We got our meatloaf here, cleaned up a little bit. He's going to get that stuff away. But only other thing I've done, and I forgot to get it on camera, forgive me, whatever, salt and pepper right on top. Uh, just another little bit of crack, crack black and uh, freshly cracked sea salt on top. We're going to let it sit a little longer, let the, some of that salt that's inside and outside uh, penetrate the meat and really kind of get all in there, get all, uh, get all good and flavorful. And then we're going to take this meatloaf right out, get it in the smoker, and we're probably looking at about a two, I'm going to say a two, two and a half hour cook on this guy because um, we're up at around two pounds of meat here. So. That being said, once that temperature or once that smoker is up at temp, I'll head outside and get this guy in there. Our smoker is at temp, according to this guy, uh, so it is definitely above the 200 degree mark. Uh, I'm probably gonna guess it's closer to 250, 260. So I am actually going to drop this down a little bit. 
there's always little things on your smoker that you can tell, uh, you know, how much gas is going through. Like mine, I've got a, a the, the perfect spot. My tank actually begins to a little high pitch squeal because it's actually restricting a, a bunch of that the gas to come through. Uh, so I know when I hit that, I know I'm in that kind of sweet spot. So I'm gonna open this up, get our venison meatloaf in there, and in about two hours, we're gonna be set. Oh, there we go. Get it in there, and we're good to go. We'll see you back inside because we're gonna work on the barbecue sauce and the glaze. All right. See you in a sec. All right. So our meatloaf is in the smoker whatever that way is. Now we're gonna make some glaze that right probably 20, 25 minutes before we pull it out of the smoker, we are going to brush this all on top and rub it around and work it all in there. So, again, you gotta perfectly measure about, I'd say half a cup of mustard. Use Dijon, don't use that crap yellow stuff. You want it to taste good, right? So you use, use the good stuff. We're then gonna go about a quarter cup maple syrup, quarter cup. Bring back that red wine vinegar. Just a bit of acidity in there. Remember we want acid, we want salt, we want heat, all that fun stuff. And yes, all that fun stuff. I don't know where my mind was going in there. But once again, we get some black pepper in there. Salt, we want a decent amount of salt in here. We're gonna go with some Worcestershire. A few little squirts. And last but not least, some soy sauce. You can use the uh, gluten-free tamari soy sauce. Uh, it is a little bit of a different flavor, but it'll get the job done if you're gluten-free. Last step. We're just gonna whisk this up. And you wanna actually make sure you're giving this guy a taste. And that's one thing, if there's one thing I can teach you in all these videos, taste. I don't know one chef that will not taste something before he serves it out. Because yes, it may look good. Yes, all the ingredients may be in there. It's tasting good to me. And remember, this is going on top of something else. So you don't necessarily want it to taste perfect. You want it to taste a little bit stronger than what you would have imagined in your mouth or in your head. So that way, once you actually apply it to the rest of the product that you're making, um, everything kind of comes together and everything will work together to develop that, that flavor that you're going for. So when I taste this, I'm actually tasting strong mustard, strong um, vinegar, some sweetness, all intensified, but once we get it on the top and there's a thin layer, it's gonna taste phenomenal. Uh, so that being said, this is done. Venison's in the smoker. All that's left, like I say, with everything that I do, and I cannot believe that I say this because I am the king of not having patience, but all we need is patience. So, that being said, but all in all, it's a waiting game. We'll check in just to show you what it's like. But once we're done, we'll bring it in here, cut it up, and we're gonna plate it like an actual meal. All right, catch you in a bit. All right, we're sitting at about uh, 135, 140 degrees on the internal temp of our meatloaf. Uh, so it's sitting right around the medium, medium rare uh, area. Sorry, medium. Um, so we're gonna pull it out. We're actually gonna finish it off right in the oven to give it a nice bark on the outside and really caramelize that glaze that we're putting on. I put a couple coats of it on already, uh, but once we get in inside, we will uh, we'll brush a little bit more on and then uh, shoot it in the oven until it's finished. So we're gonna grab this guy. Look at that beauty. If you can. Now we'll get better light inside. All right, I'll see you inside. All right, so we're about three hours in. 
we are just about done. Time to actually cut into it. Uh, so like I mentioned, we pulled it out of the smoker, finished it off in the oven right around 450 degrees. And then right now the internals sit at about 165 degrees. Um, now for venison whole cuts, you want to kind of, you know, hit it around the 120, 135 range any, any more and it's going to dry it out. Now because we added so much moisture into this, we can, uh, we can actually go and get it to the higher temps. So we'll cut into it. And we're just gonna open that up. Oh, look, just look at the juice. All right. So now that's all that's left, cut it into some pieces. Plate it. And then after you go and plate everything, the most important part is to enjoy eating. And if you liked this video, be sure to like and subscribe down below. Uh, new videos out every week, starting in January 2020. So yeah, mind you, by the time this video comes out, it's way past January 2020. So new videos every week, like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Peace.